Right, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 18th edition of Set the Captives Free. The date today is Sunday, April 4th, 2010. Um, for those of you out there um, who are paying attention to the dates today, it is Ishtar Sunday. Um, I would just, you know, do whatever you want to do with uh, with those days. I, for one, am just very, very, very grateful to my God for what he had did for us on and uh, you know why this holiday is supposed to be supposed to be recognized. So thank you, Lord. And uh, today on the line with us we have a pastor, Isaac Gutierrez. Uh, Isaac, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Yeah, and well, the I know the one who invited you here. I about forgot about my my loyal co-host here, Lynn Dickey. <laughs> how are you doing, Lynn? I'm here. I'm just going to be kind of silent. I'm just kind of nauseated, but uh, hopefully that's going to kind of go away because we prayed before. But I'm just grateful to be here, and and, and I thank the Lord for, for what he did for us also. Um, and we need to think about that this day. And uh, glad you can make it on here with us, uh, Pastor Isaac, and, and we know you're going to be back for, for more shows. I know that. Well, thank you, Lynn. Well, Isaac, why don't... Uh you know, why don't you go ahead and give us just a Reader's Digest version of, you know, how you got to where you are, if you got some testimony you'd like to share, and uh, sure, you know, why, sure, you, sure. why you'd like to speak with everybody. Okay. Well, this whole thing got started. Uh, my dad was a minister. My dad had a church back in around 19, about 1980, 1983, called Miracle Temple in Dallas, Texas. And he was a deliverance, uh, pretty much in deliverance ministry. But the thing that really got me is that how his ministry was destroyed because of an uh, undiscernment of witchcraft coming into a church. And his, the church no longer exists for that purpose, for loud and witchcraft in the church. And as we also, after we got out of the, pretty much got out of the ministry, we went into mus in music because most of uh, my whole family were pretty much got a talent to do music as a gift from the Lord. And we traveled as a, as a group. Uh, doing secular music, Tejano music, or all around the states and around the state of Texas. We did that for about 10 years, and then finally we went back to our roots, coming back to the church. And being usually a minister, if they're really called of God, they don't really want to go into the ministry. So, you know, I was a Jonah running away from what God wanted me to do. And finally he got my attention. I said, okay, God, I can't run away from you. I know you got me to do something, so here I am, Lord. I'm your willing vessel. So uh, I began to study, probably I've been studying for the past 14 years on apologetics, which is defending the faith, and a lot of having to do with paganism, the occult, uh, having to do a lot of things that a lot of pastors and most teachers kind of shun away from because they're afraid of dealing with those topics. And uh, I began to really study, 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 and this has been... I did a DVD called Unmasking Paganism in the Church, uh, put out by the Prophecy Club. And um, it's about 14 years of, you know, pretty much study and just putting all this together. And um, also telling you a little bit about me, I'm also a, a co-pastor here in, in Plano, Texas, uh, called the Spirit of Prophecy Church. And there's just so much I can go on to say, but the whole purpose is, is to get people to understand the whole thing about uh, the enduring faith. So uh, it's a little bit about me. Well, a DVD on paganism in the church, how was that received by others around you? Um, th that's always something that, that I, you know, I like to hear from people is, is how the people around them and uh, especially, you know, brethren receive information like that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, most of my comments have not been so good. <laughs> uh, I had a, one lady called in and said that she's been practicing yoga for over 20 years, and she says that it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, that she gets in tune with the Holy Spirit by doing yoga. And, uh, yeah, and then I had another uh, gentleman when I put my DVD about mysticism, and he was just saying that all I'm doing is just pretty much uh, just – fighting, you know, doctrine against doctrine. And uh, when I also put out this paranormal videos that are on my The Enduring Faith channel on YouTube, uh, most of my comments have been, mostly my comments that I get from Christians are not good. But the comments I'm getting from unbelievers are better. 
So that kind of tells you exactly where we're at in this whole thing. But um, I did have a Constance Cumbie, which came out in 1983 with the book, The mm -hmm. Dangers of the Rainbow. And she actually was at one of my meetings in Detroit, Michigan. And she loved it. And she said, you're the one that's carry on this work. And she says, and I will endorse you. And if you have any trouble in the, in the world, you know, I will, I will also be an attorney for you. So I got some pretty good backing. So I know that God is in what he's doing in this whole situation. Right, yeah. We're, we're, I think most of us here are familiar with, uh, with Constance and her work. So the, the paganism in the church now, you know, when I, when I read the Bible as well, it's, it seems a lot of modern Christians seem to have a very, very hard time accepting that it could be happening right under their nose in the church. Um, but when I read the Bible, it seems like we get example after example about how it's always managed to creep in. Exactly. Yes, sir. And it's it's one of those things too is that you know these are these are basically at least the way I look at it. These are the sins of our forefathers, mm -hmm. and they're things that for the most part our minds are innocent to. I mean, if if it, I, I I don't know any Christian who you could who you could go to and say, look, this is a pagan ritual, but I'd like to incorporate it into you know X holidays traditions let's try it nobody would go for that if they knew that it was pagan uh, right but mm -hmm. when they grow up with these and these things are the standard and they're the norm you know once it, it and it's a very very hard pill i guess for people to swallow mm -hmm. and as far as this this kind of sin goes you know the sins of our forefathers the only thing you can do is you know it, it's seek redemption for it you can throw your hands exactly. up and say i see this for what it is there's, you know, it, all I can do is end it with me. It stops in my family or my community with me. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, that, that really wasn't too difficult of a thing to do. Um, although I've noticed a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll fight me tooth and nail if I try and, you know, try and explain some things to them. I mean, there's just no way that levels of paganism like that have crept into the Christian, into the Christian faith. Um, I guess today being Easter would be a perfect example. Exactly, exactly. There's just so many traditions and so many things that people kind of mix. What it is, it's a lot of mixture going on, uh, trying to mix things that are God and things that are not, and trying to make that a holiday. But my whole DVD wasn't mostly talking about holidays. It was mostly talking more about practices and mainly a lot of having to do with nature worship. Which is actually a, which is a, a part of paganism. Paganism is a religion of nature. In other words, pagans revere nature. They see it as divine, as the imminent or the whole of life and the universe, according to w, according to pagan.com. So paganism comes in all forms and sizes, and um, I think a lot of having to do with this whole green movement that the church is going to, not realizing that that is a form of paganism. So when I'm talking about paganism, I'm not just talking about uh, having to do with holidays or anything. I'm talking about things like contemplative prayer, yoga, uh, universalism, all these things that are just bringing the church closer and closer to a one world religion. That universalism, you know, that's a that's a term that, that seems to have kind of calmed down, I, at least in the from my perspective, it seemed like it was uh, gaining some ground. People were starting to get, uh, you know, turned on to the idea of what universalism actually was, and then it seems to kind of fade it out. Um, maybe as a reminder, you can let people know what universalism is. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, universalism is a belief that um, any god that you serve is okay, as long as you don't hold on to the to the one true God, which we believe is Jesus Christ. Uh, what, what it is, is a lot of interfaith going on, where we have Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, world religions, and a lot of mysticism. And also, I don't know if you've ever seen this, the bumper sticker that's really, really popular. It's Coexist. Yes. Yes, that's, uh, that's pretty much what we're trying to synchronize all these religions as one. And it's what we call the Tzaiagis, the spirit of the age. Uh, in other words, there's a contempt and hatred for God. 
especially right now. And that is a spirit of Antichrist. Anything that is against Jesus is the spirit of Antichrist. It's not necessarily the Antichrist, but a spirit of Antichrist. And I think that the true believers of Jesus Christ are the ones that are being targeted. And if you would notice, it, you would, it would seem that atheism is really coming up strong in our nation. And Christianity is kind of taking a back seat. We're not really defending the faith like we should. And um, like you said, we got advertisement campaigns, bumper stickers. Uh, we're trying to blend Christianity with a lot of mysticism. But is there really an agenda behind this? And I believe that there is. Well, what would the, uh, the agenda be? The whole agenda is the purpose of creating a one world religion. Uh, the whole purpose is to get people to turn away from the true God, to turn away from Jesus Christ, and to accept any other God as long as it's not him. Just like uh, New Agers would say that uh, they don't believe in a God because they're trying to be a God. They want to be God themselves. So no longer are we looking towards uh, a deity or, say, a, a God that we can worship. We want to be God. And that's the whole purpose of people not wanting to have to deal with having to deal with a, a, a God. They didn't want to be God themselves. And that's the whole purpose of yoga, contemplative prayer. We're trying to become one, this divine uh, oneness. If you, you, You've you been hearing a lot of probably something called oneness. Mm -hmm. And um, and the whole purpose is, the whole purpose of oneness is to, to be one where everybody, let's everybody get along. Let the, let, let the Buddhists, the Wiccans, the, the Hindus, the, the, the Muslims, all of us, let's just come together and let's talk about world peace. And you know exactly there's not going to be world peace until Jesus Christ, uh, the, the Prince of Peace, comes and sets, and sets up his kingdom. So I don't know. Everyone's talking about trying to bring peace, but you know some of these religions, they're not about peace. It's they're peace. all about it's peace on their terms. Peace on their terms, and that's when you got fingers crossed behind your back and saying, okay, we'll have peace, but this is not really the peace that we're talking about. We'll, we'll put on a false kind of peace. And the thing about Jesus, he is not going to bring a false peace. He's going to bring the peace when his kingdom comes. Yes. Now, the, the other thing, too, that's always, always gotten me about this, even before I was Christian, is, you know, be it uh, – through universal faith, you, you know, global government, anything like that, um, you know, political correctness in general, is the push to, instead of being tolerant of everybody, and I think tolerance is a word that has lost all meaning, um, in, it's more about assimilating everybody into being the exact same person, instead mm -hmm. of saying, okay, well, these folks are Muslim, and I can share a space with these people and these folks are Jewish or, you know, Buddhist or these people are Democrat, Republican, liberal, what, right. Instead, what they're trying to do is amalgamate and assimilate everybody into one kind of form and make everybody think the same way. I mean, it's the, it's the perfect example of mind control. Mm -hmm, it, exactly. It, it's what every government has ever dreamed of. And this is what they're after. Exactly, exactly. Uh, universalism in itself, when you start looking at the religion, is they, they try and say that this is all, you know, we, we all come from the same creator, from the same God, no matter how you look at it. But then you look at the people that are pushing that idea and that agenda, and that agenda from, you know, political forums and from bully pulpits, basically, and they actually have an ideal of where they want everybody to eventually end up. Right now, it seems like the universalists are telling me that, okay, it's okay for you to believe the way that you want to believe, um, and it's okay for them to believe that they want to believe, but 20 or 30 years down the road, I think it's going to be a different story. I think that, um, you know, should, should they get their way, which, you know, Jesus made us a promise, these folks ain't going to get their way, but they're going to come close. Mm -hmm. um, down the line, what they're going to be pushing for now is, is no, this is how the world believes, this is how you need to believe. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so the whole, um, if we're going back to about universalism, it's all, all the agreements trying to be made to believe that we can come together as one, create this peace on the surf. In other words, like the song that John Lennon had, imagine there's no heaven, 
Mm-hmm. Imagine there's no hell. You know, just us. That's pretty much the philosophy of the of the universalists. Um, and if you notice, uh, this whole 2012 is coming to this whole universalism thing. We're, we're trying to push this whole uh, unity thing, and and the thing is that the church is being pushed right into it, going along with the mystic, mystical practices. Like, um, whoever thought we would have yoga practices in a church or contemplative prayer? These are things that Hindus and Buddhists do, um, not necessarily Christians here in the Western uh, in Western world over here should be involved in. And if you notice also, uh, very popular, the peace sign is back, if you notice that. Mm-hmm. The peace sign, and people don't realize that it doesn't really mean peace. It means the broken cross of Nero. Mm-hmm. Because what you're doing, you're actually saying, uh, okay, we'll have peace, but this is what we want. We don't want. We want the death of Christianity. If we can break Christianity, then that's what we can do. We can bring our world peace religion because it is Christianity that is standing in the way of our one world order, our one world religion, or our one world agenda. So the, the, the thing is, with the broken cross, that means that, okay, we don't need a God because now we can create our own destiny. We can create our own purpose. And that's the whole new spirituality that's being pushed. This what we call a paradigm shift, the shift from local thinking to a global thinking. And the whole church is getting involved in this paradigm shift. And it's what they call a consciousness or spiritual awakening. We're getting away completely from the biblical truth. And we're going to follow after mystical experiences and practices and trying to become one within ourselves. Um, just like I told you about the, the where John Lennon said, imagine there's no heaven. This is from his song. It's easy for you to try. No hell above us. Just only sky imagine all people living for today imagine there's no countries it's hard to do and no religion too imagine all the people live in peace and the world will be as one and that's pretty much the whole push and that's why you got things like the message bible which also promotes a lot of universalism they promote a lot of oneness pantheism earth worship and what we're trying to do is make these bibles to think and and try to make these bibles that are might as well say they're not Bibles, they're paraphrased. In other words, it's someone paraphrasing what the Scripture says. And it completely gets away from the Word of God. And things like the shack and stuff like that, which distorts the view of the Trinity. Or uh, it just, people are just following after everything they can think of, trying to get everyone to become one. Just become, let's all get together and let's just hold hands and say kumbaya and world peace. And we know, according to the scriptures, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's. I I I don't know. Like I, you know, I'm I'm the first person who would want world peace. So you know, I, again, I don't know anybody out there who wouldn't want world peace. But it's like exactly. you said, from the scriptures, we know that it's not going to happen. It's just like mm-hmm. a global government. I've got no problem with a global government, but. Not the one they're trying to give us. Right. It, it wouldn't work in a million years. You know, uh, G- Jesus Christ or no Jesus Christ, the form of government they're trying to bring wouldn't work. The the form of religion they're trying to bring would not work. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, when it it just – we have this promise. We, we it, It's not even something that we can fall back on. We have a promise that we can live on. It's a foundation. And we know that a, as Christians – there's really nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. It's, it's taken care That's of. Right. That's right. It's all in his hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think the whole purpose is that people are just following after anything that comes along that they think it's new, not realizing there's nothing new under the sun. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. It's just like cycles that happen. The whole thing with the children of Israel, the, they just went through a cycle all the time. Mm-hmm. God would bless them. Then they would rebel, and they would start following after pagan ways. Then uh, they would go into slavery, and and then God, they would cry out to the Lord, and he would deliver them. It's the same thing that's happening in our country. We're I, doing the same thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to try and limit the Bible or make it sound like it's less than what it is, but in many ways it's the same story being told over and over again. 
It, yes, it is. It is. It's just uh, every every time. It's just you know, the if you would just follow the ways of the Lord, you follow His commandments, and you follow His will, then things would go go right. But like in Deuteronomy, you know, if there was a lot of ble blessings, but there was actually more curses, because if you follow the ways of the Lord, you be blessed. But if you rebel against it, then there's more curses that go along with it. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, as far as you know, paganism's infiltration in the church, universalism. Um, when I don't, you know, I'm one of these people. This is one of the topics that when I speak with other Christians, I I just can't keep my mouth shut about this. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. In fact, again, today, like Easter, I have an Easter dinner I have to be at with family, and I'm going to go and spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be very difficult for me in a, in a few hours here that, to, to be able to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> because, yes, sir. you know, I, I, I see the eggs, I, you know, mm -hmm. the Easter bunny, um, mm -hmm. the ham, just... <laughs> Just yeah. every, everything, absolutely everything about Easter, you know, I, I think, in fact, more so than Christmas, Easter's uh, almost completely pagan anymore. Oh, pretty much, pretty much. And the, the whole purpose of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has just taken a back seat. You know, it's all about the other things. And like you said, tradition begins to mingle with, uh, with Christianity. And that's where you have paganism. It's like a mixture of all kinds of things just coming together. And it's a blending of things that are of God and things that are not of God. And it's just whoever, whatever's popular, whatsoever on the popularity, we call it, we jump on the bandwagon, whatever everyone's doing, as long as it doesn't offend anybody, as long as nobody gets hurt, as long as uh, nobody gets offended, you know. Well, that's again... The whole as long as nobody gets offended, um, it's it's great to see nobody at your table is offended. But what about God? And that's true. He's the one that we're mainly supposed to be uh, pleasing, and he's the one that's not very happy about what's going on. And um, and like you said, the whole the whole the whole purpose is uh, with pe with paganism. It's a very very touchy subject because people say, "Oh, I'm you know, what is paganism?" Well. Not only is paganism just having to do with practices, paganism is the worship of anything other than God himself. Pretty much me, myself, and I. It's the worship the of the, the, the creation instead of the creator. Exactly. And the person, I mean, people look at themselves in the mirror every day, and you can be worshiping yourself. I mean, you say, well, pa well Pastor, I don't worship any idols or Buddhas. Or Hindus, or, or, well, do you worship your job? Do you worship your money? Do you, anything that is, that is you put in front of God can become an idol, idolatry. And um, I think we get to the point to we don't realize what is of God and what is not because we have gotten so far away from the fine guidelines of the scriptures that we just accept anything that just comes along the way. Now, how... You know, kind of back to to the point I was going to make is, for me, I I just I put it out all on the on the table when I try and tell people about this, and sometimes I think I I go into overload mode with them when I try and explain to them what they're doing with these holidays. Um, you know, where do you find Christmas in the Bible? Where do you find Easter in the Bible? Um, mm -hmm. Even though God's given us holidays to celebrate them, if we choose to. Exactly. Um, but how do you how do you break the news to people basically? Um, how do you go about doing that? Well, basically, uh, just like today, uh, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday instead of Easter, mm -hmm. and we celebrated Passover last night. We had a nice Passover, and we just you know we just had the time when we talked about what was the whole purpose of the Passover from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It was a shadow type of Jesus Christ being the Lamb of God. To take away the sins of the world and you know by slaughtering this lamb and they put the they put the blood on the doorpost on the lentils and I mean they're what they were doing they were putting the blood of Jesus upon their heart just like we do today and the angel of death passed over and uh, it's a whole story a redemptive story about what Christ did for us 
and uh, through the whole Passover, if you go through the whole Passover feast and everything having to do with it, everything is a shadow type. Everything is symbolic of what Jesus did for us on the cross, through his burial, through his resurrection, and everything. So, I, you know, people say, well, you know, what is, you know, the Easter eggs and the, the hunts <laughs> and the bunnies? And I said, does the bunny lay eggs, you know? <laughs> um, that, see, what is, that has nothing to do with the sunrise services and things like that. That's nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here in our country, it's all about making money, commercialism. It's all about what, what, what can I make, you know, make a big buck off of somebody. You know, that's why holidays, people look forward to the holidays because they're going to spend a lot of money buying candy and buying bunnies and buying all this stuff. Have nothing to do with the, with the whole purpose of Passover and, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when you want, you know, our church, we don't celebrate Easter. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday. We, res, the, the, we celebrate the purpose of, you know, Jesus dying on the cross, he, he was put in the grave, but on the third day he rose again, Mohammed's still in the grave, Krishna's still in the grave, all these other gods are still in the grave, but Jesus is still alive. Uh-oh. Hello? Yep. <laughs> are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Oh. Okay, I, I thought I had lost you. <laughs> <laughs> the... The, the other thing, too, though, for me that, that really gets me is is once I found out what all these pagan rituals actually were, what the rabbit was, what the eggs were, what the ham was, what in who they represented, it, it's, it's disgusting. Mm. It's just absolutely disgusting. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a for fertility goddess who transforms right. herself into a rabbit, uh, an egg-laying rabbit. I mean, what mm -hmm. multiplies, even in Western culture nowadays, what multiplies faster than a rabbit? Mm. You know, the, the sure. eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be very blunt with everybody here, but she wasn't just any fertility goddess. She was also very well known for a rather lewd form of sex that could also be practiced between males. Um, that th this is who all these rituals are set up to, to honor. And yet people, they, you try and tell them this, and they just want to shrug it off and say, oh, God knows who it is that, that, that I mean this for. You know, he knows what my intention is. He knows my heart. Right. But if, they, if that's what your heart is, then your heart, I think, would have enough concern for God to not do these things. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, mm -hmm. the, the painting of the Easter eggs? Um, right. For anybody who doesn't know about that, that was back in the in the Tammuz caves when they would slaughter the, you know, they slaughter the babies um, that came from the virgins. They they would take the blood basically and they would paint the eggs. If you go to Vatican City today on Easter and you look at the Easter eggs painted by you know the the higher ups in the Catholic Church, they are painted one color and one color alone. That is blood red, and that's the reason for it. Right, right, right. So these practices and these traditions, you know, we think that they're just innocent, but we don't realize. See, in order to understand the whole uh, idea where these come from, you got to go back to the beginning. You got to go to the origins. You got to go to the history and find out exactly where did this movement come from and the whole purpose of it. Because I think we just kind of take it as tradition, not realizing what the true meaning is. So um, continuing here, um, anything you want to continue more about the universal? Well, one thing I really have a concern about is mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I think Christians want to be popular, and we want to Christianize everything. We want to Christianize like the secret. You know, we're trying to put out something, that, you know, not understanding the secret has nothing to do with the Bible. It has to do with uh, a lot of mysticism, you know, the the, the whole secret was channeled by a spirit called Abraham through Esther Hicks. I don't know if you, you, you probably have followed the secret and heard more about it, where like attracts like, so our mind can attract the things it desires. Yeah, blab but, it and grab it. 
Yeah, pretty much like the what, what kind of like the word of faith that talks about name it, claim it. You yeah. know, whatever you speak, you receive. Yeah, but you know, it take it's certain conditions that that you have to go through. There are certain conditions. There are certain guidelines that God will give you those things that you need. But it's not just saying, "Hey, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get it." It doesn't happen that way. That's that's like to me. That's like a form of sorcery. That's a form of witchcraft. Saying, "Okay, I'll get whatever I want." To me, that's kind of like manipulation. And the whole thing with the secret is the whole purpose is this: I am God. I can create anything I want because I am. I, I, there is no God, and I am a God. Pretty much. That's the secret. And everyone's following after this, even trying to Christianize it. The whole thing with the Kabbalah, the Moses Code, I mean, I, there's just so much. I mean, I think people think that paganism just has to deal with, you know, we're just talking about holidays. No, it goes very, very deep. And um, we can even go to some scripture here that I can pull up. Um, this, I'm kind of going a little bit for my presentation here in Maybe they need to know how, how this all got started and how okay. uh, it started in churches pretty much. This is really what got me going. Um, let me, get, let me, let me kind of tell you a, a little bit of what happened here. I was invited to a church back in 2001, big mega church in Dallas, Texas. I'm not going to say names because then everyone would know what I'm talking about. But uh, the whole purpose was they invited me to come and talk to the children about spiritual warfare and Pokemon cards and Harry Potter and things like that. So, I mean, the Spirit of God was moving mightily. The Holy Spirit was moving great. And, man, we had kids bringing up their books, electronic games, Pokemon cards. I mean, everything that they were, they were carrying these in the church, in the sanctuary. They threw them at the altar and said, we want nothing to do with them. Get rid of them. And, um, I mean, we probably picked up over $1,000 or more. Of just uh, of material, whether it was books, electronic games, uh, cards, toys, and neopets, you name it. They had everything, and they saw that it was wrong. And they were, it was almost like the time where in Acts, where the Apostle Paul was talking, and they were bringing up their witchcraft books, their dark art books, and they were throwing them and said, We want nothing to do with them, burn them. And they said, This is this costs a lot of money. Well, it doesn't matter if 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 if, if it's. Yeah. If it's not, if it's, if it's those, you know, the things that are not of God, then we want nothing to do with them. See, the kids were okay with it, but the parents weren't. <laughs> well, they blew all that money on it. Oh man, oh man, I, I really got, I really got, you know, I really got the, you know, pretty much, excoded by the church leadership. And what happened is, I began to receive calls telling me that the parents weren't very happy of what happened. And uh, they saw nothing wrong with the kids reading Harry Potter books as long as it keeps them occupied and it keeps them reading. Um, and that I was bringing scare tactics, that I shouldn't be bringing this type of material to children. And it says, you don't realize that all your children are into this stuff is because you don't know how dangerous it is. So, um, so that was pretty much a big encounter there. And that got me thinking. I said, you know what? I need to think deep, deep, start diving deeper into what's going on here and i begin to find out there's a lot of blindness going on in the church a lot of a lot of blind guides and uh talks in matthew 15 14 let them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch and uh then he goes on to say in isaiah 56 10 his watchmen are blind he's talking about his ministers he's talking about the people that are supposed to be the ones that are supposed to be looking out for the congregation Says they are ignorant. They are they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, and loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. Doesn't it sound like our churches today? It's all about the numbers. How big can I get my church? How many members can I get there? I'm not worried about your soul. I'm just worried about what is it in for me. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Every one for his own gain and from his quarter. But I believe that God is raising up true watchmen that are not afraid to stand up and speak the truth, no matter the opposition, no matter what the, what the people bring against them. And just like in Ezekiel's time, in Ezekiel 3.17, it says, Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, 
Hear the word of my mouth, and give them warning for me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. You know what? I don't want the blood on my hand. So when God gives me a word to bring to the church, and he is, he is going to bless me and move me towards that, then I don't want to be the one that has blood on my hands. I want to be the one that's, that's, that speaks the truth. And if they don't hear me, you know, then, you know, I did my job. I did what, what I was supposed to do. And I think that's the whole purpose of this whole broadcast here. This whole, uh, this whole program is to give people the truth, you know, setting the captives free. Uh, there's a lot of people that are in bondage, a lot of people that need to be set free. And the, what does the Bible say? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And uh, that's what I think. A lot of people need to be freed from a lot of deception. Well, the, that's it. And th that's the other thing, too, is, is folks, if, if you know, you're, you're out there doing the Lord's work and you talk to thousands of people, and you only get a handful of them to pay attention, you, you have not failed. I, I see a lot of people who just end up absolutely heartbroken because, you know, the, the Lord sends them out there on their mission and, and they, 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 you know, they put everything that they have into it. And unfortunately, people just are not willing to listen. But it's not about you getting the masses to, to, to hear what you have to say. It's about the few people who are willing to stray away from the mass and it's you know never just never give up on on the work that we're set forth to do amen amen and i believe that everyone that is doing what they can to get the word out don't realize that your work is not in vain because we're not looking for an an earthly type of uh we're, we're not looking towards earthly gain we're looking to our heavenly treasure it says, whatever your, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be. So um, I would encourage the people that don't give up. You know, this, you know, some of the, the things that we have to say are needed. And I believe there's going to come a time when people will begin to start listening. And uh, that does, you know, it's, it's a difficult word for some people to take. Because right now we're at a time where truth is really blurred. And uh, people will accept anything. But understand that truth will bring deliverance. Um, so we got to keep on that straight and narrow way. And like I was saying, a lot of things we look at things and we think that they're really good. But are they really good or are they really dangerous to our souls? Because it just takes a little leaven, a little bit of sin to leaven the lump. In other words, it just takes a little bit. One percent falseness can destroy the whole doctrine. What, just a little bit. It just takes a little bit to destroy uh, and, and make the truth into a lie. That's well. That's it, and that's uh, you know again a little leaven leaveneth up the whole lump. And what they do is the, to draw the people in and to get them to follow and to believe the you know basically the whole system, the beast that we're that we're faced with and that we deal with every day. They mix just a tiny little bit of truth. You know, we see it in the 2012 movement. Um, they take, exactly. They take just a couple of little facts or a couple of little things that they found about, uh, you know, whatever the Mayans had to say hundreds of years ago, and then, boom, they just, they absolutely run with it. And exactly. Uh -huh. I know people, you say, you bring up 2012, and they're either scared for their life or they're giddy like a little schoolgirl waiting for the big transition period. And these are people who have no spirituality, no faith, no nothing, but they got cable television, and all of a sudden they think something's coming in 2012. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think the whole thing is there, there's just so many beliefs and theories. I mean, it's just confused. It's a lot of mass confusion. I mean, and then the Christians... The problem is that I, that, I, that I have is when Christians are trying to pull up the Mayans, trying to make all these different prophecies all try to match up with the Word of God, which is not going to happen. I no. mean, 2012 is going to come. It's going to go. Of course, it's going to start. There's going to be some changes coming, of course, as we're getting further and further away from biblical Christianity. 
And that's the whole purpose, uh, to bring us more into, like you said, this oneness, this whole universal uh, thought of that, you know, we don't need a God. We can become God ourselves. And, um, the, the, you know, just, just uh, I think also I'm also putting out a, a documentary. It's called 2012, uh, The Hidden Agenda. And I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to go and find out all this information. And, man, if you don't really have great discernment, you can get really confused in what's going on out there. Uh, it's just a mu bunch of mumbo jumbo, pretty much, you know. And um, and then when, you know, when Christians are trying to place that, you know, with the timing of the rapture, when, you know, all these times that hasn't happened yet, you know, it just brings people to look at the church as a bunch of, you know, crazy people. You know, y'all been saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Now you're going to say 2012. So what, you know, where's the credibility? Because we're not following after the word of God. We're following after other man's beliefs other man's theories, Nostradamus, you know, I mean, all, how did he get his predictions? Through scrying. Scrying was a form of divination, you know, looking into a water pot and trying to see the future. Or all these different, the Mayans and all this, and they didn't believe in God. They believed in, you know, they, they worshiped and did human sacrifices, you know, and um, we're trying to follow after some advanced civilization when that civilization no longer exists, why does that civilization no longer exist? There has to be a reason for it. The the Mayan civilization, I mean, when you really break it down and you look at, at what their faith consisted of, it was like nothing new under the sun. It was the same old Babylonian-style sun worship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, different, you know, same game, different faces. That's right. That's right. And... Like I said, paganism doesn't really change. It just it just goes through a phase, and all it is is you know you're worshiping something other than God, pretty much. Uh, whether it's the sun, whether it's the moon, uh, whether it's idols, whether it's uh, practices that get you in tune through meditation, contemplative prayer, soaking prayer. I mean, people have kits try to do all these things, you know, like a labyrinth kit, you know, all. Every, there's always a new. There's always trying to be a new way, trying to follow after this, follow after experiences instead of relationship. That's mostly where I see the church right now. We're looking for mystical experiences and moving further away from that relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, the you know to. to there is a lot of, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of very interesting stuff out there to go and look at when it comes to the Mayan calendar and all that. It, it, it's interesting, but it'll suck you in, and mm -hmm. the danger in, like you said, trying to bring it back and relate it to the Bible, you have to create lies and go down different, so many different rabbit holes just to even begin to find some semblance of it working. Um, it's just not going to happen. Now, I, I personally don't believe in shutting myself off to the world and just exactly. closing my eyes to everything else. But, folks, you need to be really, really careful with this stuff. It's like when I first got into conspiracy theory. Um, this was, you know, be before I became a Christian, um, I was looking into a lot of occult-based things. Um, I would gotten involved in a lot of it. Um, but... The whole point seemed to be trying to bring as many details about so many different different aspects of be it all these occult religions and the way government worked and all this stuff and trying to mold it into one piece that just when I thought that I had it all figured out, something new would form out of that. And it just keeps you running after stuff and you, there's no end in sight to it. You're never going to figure it out. Exactly. It's just trying to uh, – just one – you know, one book after another, one philosophy after another, one theory after another. And this leads you down a, 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 a dead-end road. It leads you down a, a dead end. And uh, people are looking for answers, but they don't want to go to the, one, the thing that has the answers, which is God's Word. You know, prophecy, God, God put prophecy in there for a reason. He foretells the future. I mean, he, he, he put prophecy in there for a reason to show that he is God. And that when he prophesies something and he promises that he's going to come to pass. 
mm-hmm. uh, all these other, all these, uh, and the thing is, there's been 300 predictions that the world is going to end, and it still hasn't come. So, I mean, I think we're looking toward the wrong people when we need to look to God's word, because he tells you specifically what's going to happen, how this is all going to be laid out, and that there's going to be many people coming and saying that there is Christ, or here he, here he, here he comes, or Here's the new thing. Follow after that. Every wind of doctrine, you know, but like he says, it says his doctrines, it seduces spirits and doctrines of devils. It said in the last days, man will be seduced and they would key teachers have an itch in ears and they will be seduced by these evil spirits and doctrines of just a lot of doctrines of men. And uh, just a quick thing. Um, I'm actually doing a documentary on this whole 2012 thing bringing a biblical perspective from it. Uh, and uh, if you want to find out more, you can go to the Enduring Faith channel on YouTube to find out more about this documentary. It's going to be released in the summertime. And I was just, I was fascinated by so, so much stuff that's out there. But then what got me is how everyone's trying to relate it to the scriptures. And I'm like, there's no way you can relate the Mayan prophecies and the Hopi prophecies and the Cherokee prophecies and the world's turning around and all these different things. We're trying to put it all and say, okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. That's the timing of the rapture. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. That's the timing of the right there. That, that's it. That's it. You can't do that. Um, because a lot of these times, these people get their information through divination, whether it be scrying, whether it be astrology, whether it be uh, studying the pyramids, studying UFOs and the paranormal. That's all it is. It's a lot of paranormal activity that's happening here in our country. Everyone's following after the mystical uh, things that go bump in the night and things like that. I mean, you but, turn on all these paranormal shows, I mean, it's just packed with the paranormal stuff. Oh, God, I watched some guy about two weeks ago on one of these new extreme ghost hunter shows or whatever, and they're in this jail, and they're trying to trying to get this ghost to come out and trying to, they're chasing after some ghost in this old prison, and this moron says, oh, I need to do a blood ritual to see if we can get a, a reading on the EEG meters, and he starts biting his arm and dripping blood and drawing symbols on the floor in his blood. This is on cable television. Yes, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about extreme, the extreme paranormal or something like that. I couldn't um, believe it. You know what, it's People are just so consumed about the supernatural, the paranormal, that they're going to do whatever to conjure up. You're going to, oh, like they say, we're chasing evil spirits, and we're going to molest these evil spirits and see if they come out. So uh, this, this is all so they can maybe hear a ghost fart on a video recorder? That's crazy. I mean, you know? it, mm. it, it just, it, it, it doesn't, uh, I, you know, again, these people, they just want something real and tangible. Right. And, yeah. and as far yeah. as trying to relate everything back to Christianity um, and back to the Bible, there is stuff that you can relate back to the Bible. The problem is the stuff that relates isn't what the people want it to be. No, they don't. Um, if you want to know how the, the little G gods function, read the Bible, and it will mm-hmm. show you. And if the way that they've worked throughout history past, read the Bible. It'll show you, and it's no different. The, the system, the, the only difference between the systems of control then and the systems of control now is technology. That's right. It, it's it's the, the, the same person at the wheel. It's all Lucifer. It's all his. Exactly, and, exactly. You're right, Mario. And they've, they've, they've set this system up. You, when you've got 6,000 years to make something work, Mm-hmm. They've managed to do a pretty good job of it. It is, excuse me, it is an all-encompassing deception, be it from the indoctrination in the schools to the way that the governments are run, to the wars, to the fiat money systems, just the, the, the spirituality, everything. It is his. You know, when, when Christ was being tempted by Satan in the desert and Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world, he wasn't playing around. They were his right. to offer. That's right. That's right. But he didn't succumb to Satan, did he? No, he did not. 
he knew who he was. He was the son of he was he was God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the devil thought he could he could tempt them, and no no sorry, it didn't the, work. And the devil was a fool for trying to tempt him, but he was not a fool with what he was offering. Yep, you're right. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking about that whole, you know, we know that the paranormal and this whole ghost hunting and all that, but uh, God really wanted me to sit down and he wanted me to start something new. Because uh, the thing about it, a lot of times people won't sit down and just hear a sermon or just listen to something. People want to see a visual image. They, they want to see a film. They want to see a documentary, something that's moving fast paced. So, you know, I prayed about it and the Lord led me to make a, uh, a documentary called Spellbound by the Paranormal. And if you want more information, you can go to my uh, YouTube channel. Let me see if I can get the address here. Okay. Um, also, also, we'll uh, we'll try to remember to make sure we get links to all of this uh, on our page as well when they for people oh. who download the show. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. But uh, just just trying to go back. I mean, I just explained to you all this craziness that's going on with vampires, werewolves, UFOs. I mean, it's just a mess because people are looking after something out of the ordinary. That's why they call it the paranormal. Something that's beyond the normal. Uh, mm -hmm. But instead, uh, we're looking towards a, the occult, Ouija boards and stuff like that. We're trying to conjure up something that uh, we want to see these, you know, we want to see power. The whole purpose of following after magic and mysticism is people want to see power. That's why the kids are after the Harry Potter and the whole, all, all these new things that are coming out. Um, vampires, werewolves, I mean, people just want something that is forbidden, which the scriptures say, but they think that uh, that's something that they can kind of Christianize, you know. How do you Christianize a vampire? <laughs> How do you Christianize werewolves? How do you Christianize ghosts and all these things? When the Word of God calls them familiar spirits, and he calls them uh, doctrines of devil. I mean, it's, you know, there's no way we can try to turn something into something that it's not. The, the thing is, is familiar spirits, that word's always kind of gotten to me as well, is they turn themselves into something, these are spirits that turn themselves into something familiar to the person viewing them. Mm -hmm. It's something that you will understand and comprehend. Um, that's why when we get into the UFOs, I don't think we're dealing with anything that we haven't dealt with before, be it vampires, werewolves, fairies, gnomes, leprechauns, you name it. It's a different face for the different age, but it's the same Thing it's always been. If it, even if you get into a lot of the UFO reportings uh, if from some of the secular guys like Jacques Vallée, um, mm -hmm. he's flat out come out and said, you know, I'm I'm not a Christian, but one thing I'll tell you is that these that these aliens are probably what we have been calling demons in, a, in generations past, and that they seem to tailor fit experiences and sightings and abductions and the way they present themselves to the people so that they have a maximum effectiveness mm -hmm. when people see them. They're effective and efficient, which is another calling card of Satan. Exactly. He's always going to try to make uh, everything look like uh, a lot better. You know, says, well, if you follow my ways, I'll give you the power. I'll give you, I'll give you, like you said, he's, he gave, he said, Jesus, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. They belong to me. I'll give you all this power, riches, but all you got to do is sell yourself to me. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that sell themselves to the devil because they think they're going to gain power and authority when all this, when all he's doing is coming to collect. He's a bone collector. He comes to collect after a while. He, you know, when you, when you pretty much put your, your name on the dotted line, you become his. But that doesn't mean you can't be take you know, that 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 can be broken to the power of Jesus Christ. He can pull you out of that occult. He can pull you out of the whole paranormal uh, obsession, you know, following after psychics and mediums and things like that. And a lot of the time, these people that are psychics and mediums, it's because they got a disillusion with the church because they don't see no power and authority because we don't use it. You know, we don't see the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healings. They're still happening. It's just that people uh, have decided, you know, well, that stuff doesn't happen no more. Miracles don't happen. You know, healings don't happen. That was back there, you know, 
during the time of the disciples. That doesn't happen no more. Oh, yes, it does. You know, the Holy Spirit still moves. He's still in the miracle work and business. It's just that uh, a lot of churches have, have moved away from that. And I think it's time we get back to that, to start seeing where the people say there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the true God. And people get healed and delivered and set free and the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear. You know, this, it, it's going to come back to those times, but we got to get back to true Christianity and get away from all this, this whole New Age Christianity. Yeah, it, it's just so deceptive, and, and God warned us about it. Um, I don't know, I just, I can't help but feel that when I read Revelation is that a lot of this is is pointed to, you know, Christians giving away what is rightfully theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's exactly what we do. Um, no, no matter how, well, for example, it's like uh, you, with with Christians uh, saying that the, the, you know, well, the Jews are God's chosen people. We need to hand Israel back to them and all this work that's going on over in the Middle East to make sure the Jews get back their land. And it's like, well, no, that was the inheritance given to you by God. It, it, it got passed along. Um, mm. I, I feel that we're we're giving up our you know what we've inherited and what our birthrights are. Um, and I don't want to send us off into left field on on another tangent. I'm just giving right. examples of how it is that that as Christians we're you know through universalism, through giving up our birthrights, through the paganism that's creeping into to the church. Um, it's it's sad to say, but. Christianity, especially what we consider to be the mainstream Christianity, is doesn't look like what God had in mind for Christianity. No, it doesn't. No, it's it, especially now. I mean, pretty much. I don't know if you uh, saw uh, in Newsweek. It came out, I think, last year, and on the front cover of Newsweek, there was an article talking pretty much about is this the death of Christianity? Or the end of Christianity, it was something like that, um, and it had the form. I think it said the death of uh, the end of Christianity, something like that. I have the article here, um, uh, having to do with. I think it was yeah, Christian America. You know, pretty much is this the end? And you would find out this is pretty much the viewpoint of a lot of Americans. They uh, don't want nothing to do with God. They want nothing to do with uh, Christianity. They see it as a crutch. They see it as a religion of, of being forced to do this and that. But this is what made this country great, is being birthed on the, the, the Word of God, having the, 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 the principles of the Bible. And we're trying to do away with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're trying to do away with that. And the further we get away from that, the further we go into anarchy, the further we go into nihilism, the further we go into uh, pretty much... A, a, we're bringing destruction to ourselves, not really, not realizing what we know is good for us. Whoops, sorry, I had myself on mute there. Okay, so, <laughs> that's well, okay. Yeah, that's that's it again. You know, it just goes back to unfortunately the a large part of the attitude is that you know we. We're Christians. We wouldn't allow this to happen to us. But I'm sure that a lot of the Jews back back in the day had the same attitude. We're Jews. How could we allow ourselves to get so far separated from God? Mm-hmm. And yet mm-hmm. they did time and time again. And it seems to be the way that God's people, the ones who claim that they love him the most and, and who uh, undoubtedly do love God, um, but they just don't they, they don't see it when they do it. And exactly, exactly. Right, 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 right. And I think that's that's kind of where we're, you know, that's where we're at, and that's a, a great, great danger. And I mean, it's it's at least in my mind possible that in Revelation, when it speaks about the great falling away, this may not just necessarily be an event. And I say may, but it may not necessarily be an event that where everybody just turns their back on Christianity because it's Christianity and runs away from it. I mm-hmm. mean. It, it, I, I at least reserve the thought that maybe this has to do with what we're seeing now. I believe so. I believe so. I, it's uh, usually things don't happen right away. I think there's always gradual steps. 
to get into where we're headed. And it's just little by little by little by little, the more we lose, like you said, we pretty much have given up our rights. We're giving up our rights. We're giving up our rights as Christians. And we're kind of just laying down. And uh, pretty much, I mean, we're like the ostrich that puts its head in the sand and, say, and sees trouble and just puts his hand in the sand and says, I'm not going to do anything about it. But the problem is, the ostrich's head is in the, in, the, in the ground, but the rest of it is exposed. <laughs> so, you know, you know, you get hit from behind. So pretty much we have our heads in the sand. But the thing is, we still have the rest of our body exposed. So by having our body exposed, then we're hit with every target. Um, and more and more, I mean, pretty much people that if you say you're a Christian, I mean, you're pretty much you're hated. The Bible says, that you, what did Jesus say? And uh, you, it, you're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. You're going to be hated for my name's sake. So I think when Christians become a Christian, they think that when they become a Christian, they're going to come and, oh, yeah, God is just going to be this, you know, it's all going to be all, you know, nice and rosy and uh, just tiptoe into the tulips and everything. But they don't realize that when you get, you become a Christian, you just join the army of the Lord. And it becomes a battle. It's a fight every day. And you have to contend for the faith. You have to continue to fight because Satan is after one thing. He's after the souls of men. And he wants to take your soul. And he's going to do everything and pull everything in his arsenal to be able to bring you down. But uh, like you said, I mean, I mean, I'm just speaking forth the truth. And whoever hears, praise the Lord. And I know I've gotten a lot of opposition to a lot of the things I talk about because it's just... It's just so much happening in the church, and instead of looking into these things, we kind of just say, well, there's no harm in it. We won't worry about it, as long as it pleases the people. But we're pleasing the people, but we're not pleasing God. He's not happy about it. Well, you know, you've got, you've got uh, you know, kindred spirits here with you, and, and, and Isaac, you know, we would... I hate to have to cut you short here, but uh, I know we're running up on time. It's, again, Easter Sunday. Unfortunately, I've got a few places I've got to be. Okay. Uh, but I would I would love to have you back on sometime soon. Well, great, great. I would love to be. Um, so you're welcome back anytime as well. If you've got anything that you just want to get, you know, if, if an idea comes into your mind and you need to get it out, man, you just let us know, and we'll be more than happy to give you some air time. Oh, great. I appreciate it. I thank you for the opportunity and, and Lynn and you, Mario, for allowing me to come on your show. And, and hopefully a lot of people will hear this and uh, they'll start, you know, looking at this material and start looking and say, you know what, maybe it's time I do my due diligence instead of just listening to somebody. I think they, what happens is people just want to hear somebody and not do their own homework. You know, don't necessarily take everything someone says. Go back and do your own study. Go back and do your own looking up some of these things. And that way you know exactly if it's the truth or not. You know, sometimes people just take whatever that minister says or that person says or that teacher says because of their credentials or whatever, not realizing, hey, you know what? We need to be a noble Berrigan and search the scriptures daily and see if it's true. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. So... Sister Lynn, I don't know if she's still on the line with us or not. I know she was feeling under the weather, like she said. I'm right here, uh, Mario. I'm listening. Okay. Well, I'm just kind of kind of sick. <laughs> well, I'm hoping everybody out there listening will be praying for you to get better. Um, I, I certainly that. will. I appreciate that. I really do. And we'd like to have uh, Brother Isaac come back and, and go into depth about some of these practices that the church is. This is kind of an introductory show, so maybe next time we can... Uh, go into depth about some of the stuff and how dangerous it is. I had a lot of questions for him, but I just, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't go there. You know, I wanted to talk about some stuff I've seen, um, gold dust and all this crazy stuff going on mm -hmm. in the churches. You know, it's just pure witchcraft. It mm -hmm. is, yes, ma'am. So, all right, folks. Well, again, it's Sunday, April fourth, two thousand and ten, and this has been set the captives free with Pastor Isaac Gutierrez. God bless and have a good one. You too. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Talk to you later.